Thank you for joining the AZ140 study guide and in this episode we will finish our planning of your WBD infrastructure by talking about your clients with everything from the features, deployments, and management. Stay tuned. I'm Dean Safola, and this is the Azure Academy. The Windows Virtual Desktop clients allow your users to access your organization's remote apps and desktops over the Reverse Connect or RDP short path protocols. And if you want more detail on how those things work, go check out episode five in our series. Now there are several clients to choose from depending on the operating system that is on your client devices, and more importantly, what your users will be doing and what they need to do it. Now we do have several links in the video description as usual in the resources section that are related to this particular video. And we'll be walking through those links as we're teaching you about this topic, but be sure that you save them for your future reference. And our first link gives us an overview of all the different WVD clients. So first we have the Windows desktop client and that's a traditional x86 application along with the Microsoft Store version of the client which is a universal Windows platform app. And then we have the third party operating system clients like Android, iOS and macOS. Then we also have the HTML5 web based client which could be used on basically any device that has an HTML5 browser. And notice that each one of them has a getting started page and a link to see all of the latest features and which will also give you the version history. And like I said in the beginning, half of the question is what is the operating system of your client devices? That part's pretty obvious, but the more important question is what will your users be doing and what are the features that they need in order to do it? And for that, we have the second doc in our resources link, which compares all of the different clients and the features that they support. For example, if you needed multi-monitor support, then you can only use the Windows desktop client or the Mac OS client. Now, why would it only be those two? You don't have an iPhone that has two screens. When you also use the HTML5 web browser, that is a single browser session. It doesn't span multiple browsers, therefore you can't put it on multiple monitors. Now there's two other big features that I'll call out here, and that is Teams with the optimizations. This refers to the audio video redirection features that is only supported on the Windows desktop client today. And the other one is Single Sign-On, supported on the Windows desktop and HTML5 clients only. And there does seem to be some confusion around single sign-on with WVD because there is another doc that I have been pointed to several times by people commenting on videos that say that WVD does not support SSO. So let me clarify what's going on here. Both of these documents are technically correct. So how can that be? Well, it's because there are two different kinds of SSO involved in WVD. The first is for the WVD client, that's when you subscribe and log on, and the second is when you start a WVD session to a remote app or desktop. As of today, single sign-on on the WVD client side is supported, and this is able to function because of what's actually going on in that process. The very first step in the WVD process is to authenticate to Azure Active Directory. Once that happens, you'll receive a token which will be presented to the web access layer of WVD, which will give you your list of apps and desktops. Clicking on any one of those apps or desktops begins the second part of the process where SSO is not yet supported. Now, in order to make SSO work, you need a Active Directory Federation server or ADFS in your environment and Azure AD configured to accept single sign-on. And so with that, you now have your list of features and you have your operating systems that should point you at the right clients for your particular use case. So the only other questions that we need to answer in this episode is how are you going to manage all of that? And the first thing that comes to mind is deployment. Now, you basically have two options, manual, and automated. Now as to which one you should use is going to depend on your skills, your tools, and who the device belongs to. Since WVD can allow users to bring their own devices, you may not have control over those particular clients. 
And so the best thing you can do is provide instructions to them to download, install, and then subscribe to their WVD feeds. For example, mobile devices. Most companies aren't issuing people phones anymore because we all have them. So you would just instruct your particular users to go out to the Google Play Store or the iOS Store, download their particular clients and set them up on their systems. So all they need to do is subscribe to their WVD feeds. And we dug into discovery in episode two, but I think it bears repeating. So here I've got my iPhone opened and I'll open my WVD app and I've got nothing registered. So I wanna add a new user. So I'll click to add and I'll type in my user's email address, but I can't find anything. Now you could resolve this just by telling them to remember the long URL for the feed discovery, but that's a pain. Let's solve this with DNS. So here I have an Azure public DNS zone, and this is what I use for my internet name resolution. We need to go and add a new record, and your name for that record should be underscore MSRADC. The type of record should be a text record, and I'll leave my time to live at one hour. And now we need our value for this record. It's where that text record resolves to. And you can grab that link directly from the docs, and I'll just post it here for our feed discovery. And there you go our new record has been added. So all you have to wait for is DNS propagation, which could take anywhere from a couple minutes to a couple hours. And we go back to my iOS client and then type in the user's email address again. And now through the power of DNS, we can complete that lookup find all of the things that we have access to and get back to work. Now for your automated processes, I'm going to assume that we're dealing with company owned devices so that you have more options. We still have the question of the skills that you possess and the tools that you have. So let's start really simple with just a basic script to install. So on this dock, which is the Windows desktop client for admins, you can see two code blocks here, one for device installation and the other for user installation. And if you've ever done a MSI scripted install before, that should be pretty straightforward. You can plug that same installation into your automation tool sets. And that would be things like Chef, Puppet, PowerShell Desired State Configuration, Configuration Manager, or you can put it into a system that you have through MDM enrollment like Intune or now Endpoint Configuration Manager. So here is my Endpoint Configuration Manager admin console. And let's go on the left and click on the apps and we'll add a new app. Now we have to select the list of the applications here that we want to install. And there's lots of choices like Windows Store, iOS, Android is all the way at the bottom, as well as Win32 apps. And that's what I'll choose. So here we have to select a package and this should be in a .intune win file format. Now, if you don't know how to convert an MSI into a .intune win file, be sure that you subscribe and hit the bell because we are going to have a whole bunch of videos digging into Endpoint Configuration Manager and all of the features. So you don't wanna miss that. Once you have selected your file, you need to fill in the details about that file, name of the app, description, publisher, all that basic kind of information. And then you hit next. And here the .intune win file has been expanded and you can see the details from the MSI file that was inside it. And all this was just provided automatically. So you can tweak anything that you need to and then hit next. And now you need to set the device requirements. This is what the client is going to have to have before it's allowed to install this application. And you can fill out as much detail here as you want to, as long as you've specified the Windows version. Next, there are the detection rules. How do we know that you have properly installed this application? Another beauty of using an MSI file here is you'll have the ID tag of the MSI that can just easily be referenced from the system's configuration data. And then a few tabs later, you do your assignment, which I'll do to my WVD users. And then you can hit create and finish that process. And I've done that similarly for the Microsoft Store version of the client. So any systems that I have that are hybrid Azure AD joined and managed by my MDM solution, I can now push out the WVD client. And you could do something similar if you use a different MDM toolset. So that's deploying the client and now thinking about updates and management. You could certainly create updated versions of those clients and push them out through the same MDM process, but you can also think simpler and do this simply at the installation. Back in the Windows desktop client for admins doc, there is a configuration section and here's the particular registry settings that allow you to control the automatic updates and how the client perceives them. 
So zero would disable the notifications and turn off updates. One would show notifications, but turn off auto updatings. Or two would be the fully managed approach. And when they close their client, it would update automatically in the background. Now, some things that don't happen in the background would be clicking the subscribe button and the like button and the notification bell. And don't forget to share the Azure Academy videos from the AZ140 series with all of your friends and family. Cross your social media so that everyone can prepare for the certification exam, which now has an official release date of March 29th. And that means that you need to study the rest of the videos in our series, which you can do right here at the bottom, or check out the latest Azure Academy video up here at the top. Thanks for joining me today, and I hope this has been a help to you. Comment below with any questions you have, and I will see you in the next episode. Happy learning.